Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. We're talking Dune Prophecy and we're going to throughout its run on HBO starting this Sunday, November 17th. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you high on Dune Prophecy and what are your thoughts going into it? If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 4,000 subscribers and a special shout out to all of our new subscribers. Only a few short days away from Dune Prophecy and early reviews, early reactions are now starting to hit the internet. I have a friend who actually saw the first episode. I have not been able to. I'm going to be watching it live every Sunday night with all of you and doing a review shortly afterwards. But my friend said that while he enjoyed the episode, it was not his favorite thing on TV. It was not comparable to The Penguin, uh, he said, but also that... You know, the, there's a, I guess, a prologue before it that was more engaging and interesting than the plot that we got in the pilot episode. He's only seen this one episode, so can't comment on all the entire season. But as for now, he just said it felt a little bit slow and disjointed at places, but that's just one person's opinion. Who cares? I'm someone who goes into something. You can tell me all you want. I'm going to go in with an open mind and see it for what it is. So I'm still looking forward to this. But over at Rotten Tomatoes, uh, the reviews are starting to come in from critics. I had a look at it yesterday, almost did this video yesterday, and it was at 72%. Today, that number has risen to 74%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it, you know, a positive leak is not common. It's not as common on Rotten Tomatoes as a negative drop-off. So let's look at some of the reviews and what they have to say. First, there's this article right here. Dune Prophecy first reviews like Game of Thrones in Space, but weirder, which I think would make people happy. And there's the uh, New York Comic Con trailer. Uh, is it as good as the movies? And uh, Teresa Lascon from Collider says, sure, there's no Timothy Chalamet or Zendaya gracing our screens, but the talent of the cast mixed with the absolutely stunning visuals and production design make the universe feel fathomless. It feels like this show has been plucked directly from the movie instead of feeling like a lesser imitation, which was one of the concerns I had going into it was how is this going to feel connecting to the movies? They said they wanted them to feel like they were part of the Denis Villeneuve universe, and how is that going to play out? I thought the Penguin did a phenomenal job with that and that aspect of it, but how is it going to go with Dune? Because Dune, you know, it's not Gotham City, right? This is a, this is a science fiction, fantastical world that's non-existent, in our daily lives, right? We can't open the door and see. I mean, you could, I guess, if you lived in the desert, but for the most part, you can't. So I was really excited, interested to see how they're going to portray that. And that sounds like we're going to get something. Daniel Feinberg from The Hollywood Reporter says, the show fails to live up to most of what is technically astonishing about the Villeneuve films, but it offers moments of handsomely produced, morally murky scheming and backstabbing. Uh, Elijah Gonzalez says, from the from Pace Magazine, if what drew you into Villeneuve's film was mostly the haunting ambiance, you may be disappointed. Interesting to hear that. Let's go down to, is it weirder? If you're looking for some of Dune's wonderful sci-fi weirdness, you're in luck. Dune Prophecy makes a meal of the sisters' many strange visions, in some cases even eclipsing Villeneuve's interpretations of the Bene Gesserit's eternal powers. That's from Bellin Edwards of Mashable. Looper.com, Ruben Baron from Looper.com, the show's horror elements lean into the weirder, more su supernatural elements of the Dune universe that the first two movies haven't touched upon quite as much. That is intriguing, the horror elements that we can go into, see a little bit more on HBO. You can do whatever you want on HBO, that's kind of their MO. Push the limit, and then push the limit further. No limitations on HBO, that's exciting. Will it appeal to anyone other than a longtime franchise fans? Megan O'Keefe from Decider says, To my shock and personal delight, though Dune Prophecy is not built for, for the normies, Dune Prophecy gives Frank Herbert's vast and strange world back to the science fiction dorks like me. Mary Sororki from Consequence says there's the demographic who hasn't seen the movies and couldn't be made to care about the books, but just loves a grand sci-fi epic, and that's the group of people I'd be most excited to see give the show a try, and that's very telling, hearing that this might not just be for diehard Dune fans, this could go beyond that, expand beyond just diehard fans, people who don't know exactly what they're getting into, someone who just wants to sit down and watch good television with a lot of dynamics, a lot of mystery, and a lot of intrigue, and you just want a good show. Something to watch every Sunday night with, you know, your loved one, your friends, your family, whatever, with some popcorn and eat, and that's what this kind of sounds like. It could just be a ride. Maybe not necessarily a fun ride, definitely a sci-fi weird ride, 
but something that you would enjoy nonetheless. So all in all, the first reactions to Dune Prophecy highlight its stunning visuals, complex storytelling, and deep character exploration. In a, in a basic sense, I think, you know, to be a genre writer, you know, you, you live to sort of interface with a property like Dune. Earlier this week, Dune Prophecy showrunner Allison Shapker talked to Perry Nemiroff at Collider about the change in name. The original title for the series was, of course, Dune the Sisterhood, which was later changed to Dune Prophecy. Nemiroth asks, now that we're digging into the story, can you explain why the shift felt like it better reflected the show that you made? Shapker's response is, look, the Sisterhood is much more our point of origin, and I think that there was a time when that title was very grounding and orienting to the show. We are still explaining it as, this is the story of the origin of the Bene Gesserit, but I do feel like it also set in a fully realized world where it involves the great houses and the Imperium and the Emperor. Eventually, over time, there are the other schools. There are the Mentats. There's the Spacing Guild. There's so much to the world that I don't think we wanted to artificially narrow it in the title ultimately. And in some ways, Dune Prophecy is both very representative of the Sisterhood because they're going to obviously put in play a prophecy that's going to bring about Paul Atreides, and it's very much who they are. But I think, also, it allows anyone in the Imperium to relate to it, what we believe in, what we don't, what stories we're going to tell, who we're going to elevate with those stories. I think Dune Prophecy is thematically also very true to the show. Very exciting that they know their base, they know their foundation, but they change the title and the narrative... And that change allows them to explore other areas of the Dune saga. It's so uh, endlessly rich and vivid and layer and complex and uh, and the characters are amazing and the world building is amazing. So I could go on and on about sort of, I hope that all the work I've done has prepared me to sink my teeth into Dune in a way that is enjoyable for the audience. At the end of the day, HBO was looking to fill the void left over from Game of Thrones. Where you had Game of Thrones, House of Dragon, they had the colossal hit, obviously, of the Penguin, which I covered on this show. You can check out those videos. But they're looking for the next big thing. And they're really hoping that Dune Prophecy becomes a massive franchise and something that they can continue and go back to, I want to say year after year, but you know what I mean. It'll be every couple of years, whatever, we get a new Dune saga, whatever they end up doing in the timeline. They have 10,000 years between Dune Prophecy and Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 1. So there's a lot of time to play there. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. I'll be doing more shows leading up to the first episode on Sunday. And I'll be doing reviews, like I said, and other videos as the show is released. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. Until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.